All right, folks, this is Harris Sultan, the ex-Muslim atheist, and welcome to the second episode of Sultan's House of Sin. Yes, this is a place where we all commit all kinds of terrible sins. There's another thing I want to talk about because it's been troubling a lot of people, um, and a lot of Westerners don't know about it, and I think it is important for me to talk about it. You all might have heard of CAA, which is a Citizenship Amendment Act that was introduced by Modi government last year, and which basically says that any minority that is persecuted in countries like Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Afghanistan can come to India. Now, obviously, there are some little details, but this is just the overview. Um, what that in those list of minorities included uh, Christians, Hindus. Um, and everyone else except for Muslims. Now, that angered a lot of people, and Muslims in India have been protesting, so you would have seen all the protests um, and all the people getting upset about it. That was because of that, because they were saying, that, why haven't you included Muslims in that? Which is a fair point if you are a citizen of a secular country. I mean, I wouldn't want Australia to bring out a new citizenship act where it says everyone can come except so and so so that so and so would be discriminated against no matter how strong your reasons might be that oh these people have already been causing trouble these people when you say these people you're basically stereotyping so that's why principally people can't accept it but but other than that it's a very good thing because yes there are people minorities in Pakistan, Bangladesh, and in Afghanistan. You've probably heard about it. Some, some of the Sikhs were murdered in, um, in Afghanistan by Taliban, and they all asked that, please, get us out of here. So th some of, somebody's got to help out those people. So what troubles me is that, okay, truly classical, secular people have a right to complain about it. You know, like I can complain about it, that, hey, you've got to include everyone. You've got to be in as inclusive as possible. But then but on the other hand, Pakistanis, they have no leg to stand on. What are they saying? They're basically saying, yes, we do persecute minorities in our country. Hey, we even persecute Muslims in our country. You've got to take them as well. What are you saying? What are you complaining about? So, yes, Pakistanis should have been complaining about, hey, why did you introduce this act? There are no persecuted minorities in Pakistan, which would obviously would have been a, a barefaced lie. But having said that, I thought that I should, because I am more concerned about the issues in Pakistan, because I'm a Pakistani, just like I am more concerned about the issues re relating to Islam, because I'm an ex-Muslim. So I thought, you know, I, I'm in my last stream in Urdu a couple of days ago. I shared a news story which was fresh, very. It, it was it was only a couple of days old at that time. Um, so I shared that news story where a 14-year-old Hindu girl was uh, taken away. Let me share the news story. So you can see this here. So look at this man. If you call this thing a man, Greybeard, and this is a 14 year old Hindu girl. She was, she was taken away from her village and converted to Islam. And then this guy married her. How convenient. A 14 year old girl. Now this happened in Sindh in Pakistan. Now this is a daily occurrence. In 2019 alone, more than 41 girls belonging to Hindu faith have been kidnapped and converted to Islam by force. Now, there might, might have been some reduction, which is a good thing, but I can't confirm that. But, but, but the same news story says that around 1,000 cases of Hindu girls, Hindu and Christian girls being forced to convert were estimated in the province of Southern Sin alone in 2018. So if that was 1,000 in 2018 and, you know, it's 41 girls in 2019, then that's a re major reduction. But critics say that these are estimates because a lot of these things actually go unreported. To, for me, even 41 is a lot, um, let alone 1,000. So that, I share this news story and I say, you know, this is why you've given the reason to India to show the world that, hey, look, what's happening? Now, I, I can't imagine any Muslim society, or Muslim family would allow their girls to marry a non-Muslim, let alone a 14-year-old girl. And that's what these guys are doing. So, um, so but, and, but just after that, another news story came out, uh, uh, very similar to this one. Share that one. Two Hindu girls abducted in Pakistan demand justice. So this is the family of the abducted, abducted Hindu girls. And this time we've been told that a minister behind it, a politician is behind it, who belongs to the so-called 
secularist kind of political party of Pakistan, which is Pakistan's People's Party, is that guy's name. I forgot his name. His name is Pir Faisal Shah Jalani, a member of the National Assembly. So he's an MNA. And these things are happening in Pakistan. And these people then say, oh, you are just, you know, slandering us. Well, this is not slander if it's true. You've got to stop this. You've got to lift your game. Otherwise, we're just, we, we, it's our job to actually expose this bullshit to the world. And I would say that India, well done, take all the Hindus and Christians and Ahmadis as well, which were not included in the original one. Please take all of them out of, you know, of Pakistan. Anyway.